I'm not like acting up here, you know? It's just me singing. I have my guitars, I have my voice, that's all it is. This is bare bones. I like really want to move with intention because we're all working towards the same thing to make these kids fucking lose their minds. And that's like how I'm moving for the rest of my life. Yes, dark out here, you better believe. Oh, it's dark out here, you better believe. Yo, what's going on, bro? What's up, dudes? What are we doing? How you doing? Oh, good, man. It's a big moment. I just walked by your big ass face on the side of this amphitheater hey, right now. Oh, isn't that too much? It's a good picture of me, though. Hey, my hair. I love your hair. Thanks, man. <laughs> you know, my initially my name was Dominic Mills. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. So we could have been brothers. So we're like long lost brothers in this sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We both got the apple tattoos. Yeah, you do. It's a this beautiful is, thing. This is too much, though. Well, we're in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. We're at the amphitheater. Yeah. Beautiful venue. Yes. You got the David Bowie suite. What's going through your mind before a night like this? Well, I just want to make sure that I'm well rested. I made a huge tour, lots on the line. Yeah, I try to give it a lot every night. Like they tell me to go like 98% or like 92, but I try to, you know, at the end I'm always sweating and freaking out. So I, I want to make it like special each night, but it takes a lot out of the chest. I saw some clips that you posted uh, on Instagram too, and you're just, you got the mic, you're swinging it, you're going crazy. Um, it's fun, dude. We've been uh, crushing it, honestly. And the shows are huge. I mean, these, I've never done amphitheaters. I'm usually doing like bars and like small, I mean like House of Blues and shit. Yeah. So it's fun. No, dude, it's definitely a level up. You know, you just came out of the green room. This is a space that's sacred. It's reserved for friends, family, crew. <laughs> Walk us through, like, like, what is your green room like before a show? Do you, do you like everyone back there with you? Do you like people hanging out? Do you want to kind of yeah, clear yeah, before yeah. you go on stage? No, I like them to chill. Like, when I'm making music in the same way, I prefer that people move around and, and not make a spectacle of it. So the same thing. I do vocal warm-ups and shit, and it's weird when they're they're doing that because I'm like, me, 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 me. Ga, 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 ga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want them in for that, but other than that, it's cool. You mentioned like getting rest and finding downtime. How do you do that when you're on the road? I brought my trainer on tour. His name's Ty, and we do stretches and meditations and we work out and shit. I'm thinking about getting a hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> you're gonna put that on the bus or what? Yeah, there's three buses. That's insane. You wanna go check out the stage? Yeah, man. So a lot of artists don't like to write when they're on the road. Oh, yeah. Do you find it an inspiring place for you to create in Dude, between shows? Yeah, I brought my homie Devin, Devin Workman with me, and we have been like working every night. Like last night, we sat after the rally show and we just sat in the green room. We set up all the speakers and uh, we just riffed, like streamed for three hours straight. I was just on the mic, like not stopping. And, and, Dude, people were crying at the end. It was nuts. Like, we were fucking, it was emotional. It was beautiful. And I'm trying to get like that every night, you know what I'm saying? So you wrote a song last night? Yeah, we've been writing every day, yeah. That's amazing, man. Multitasking. There's a lot going on back here. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the crew. <laughs> Obviously, we got a lot going on. There's a big crew here, and I feel like a huge part of being on tour is the vibe, right? And so, like, I want to know, how did you choose your tour family, the people that are on stage with you, the people that are, you know, sleeping on the bus with you? Uh, through a series of tours, dude. It just took us, like, two or three tours to get these people. I guess my boy right there. What's up, man? He's the best in the world. Waylon, play South Park. So if you can do that, you can pretty much come on. Tour. You can tour Dominic fight. Yeah. What's it like, uh, you know, being able to play Sunbird for the first time? Yeah, it's surreal. The fact that people know the words is crazy. The people that are singing back to me, you know, each night, they know every word. They know like the inflections and the fucking and the lyrics. It's nuts, dude. It's too much. And it's been out like two weeks. Yeah. Or something. It's incredible. I know that you made a lot of these songs a while ago. Do you feel like your relationship with any of them has changed since being able to perform them every night? Yeah, I enjoy them more. I was a little critical about the album, you know? How so? It's old. It's old music. I mean, I've talked about this, but I was like very self-critical. And when it came out and I heard the people enjoying it and singing it back to me, it, like changed everything. I love it now. Yeah. One of my favorite songs is a song called Sick. Yeah. Dude, Dude I had to push for that one. Really? Yeah. I was like, isn't this tight? Everyone's like... And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to put it on here anyway. Oh, dude, I love how, like, the tag is, like, understated and there's, there's space and there's, like, yeah. gaps to it and it really forces you to listen. Are you playing that song live? Yeah. How yeah. fun is that one to play on stage? It's sick, because it sounds like Last Night by The Strokes. So we started off, like, with the same riff and the same drums, and then I switched, like, oh, you get so high, you know? So it's fun. But, yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. I know a big thing for you, too, has been vocals, right? And I was sitting out there watching you sound check and... 
it's you 110 percent mm. front and center for mm. everyone to hear talk to me <laughs> dude talk to me about that journey because that's a that's a very vulnerable place you know to be not hiding behind tracks and yeah. in production um luckily man i have just good people like my crew is nuts like um my front of house dude andrew is insane my um my ears monitor like lady courtney is insane she's out of her mind and they make it easy for me we really dialed in the vocal effects this guy named henry quapis and i we sat there because initially it was me playing a lot of guitar and kind of hiding behind my guitar playing. And then Henry was like, we should hire like the best guitarist and you should just put that shit down and make sure that your, your vocals sound amazing. I was like, I'm not like a singer, dude. You know what I mean? So that's not going to work. But now I am. Now it's working out. And how does that feel to be able to like go on stage in front of thousands of people, yeah. hold a microphone and this hit all This is the first left. tour. This is the first tour we've done it. So I'm still kind of grasping it. You know, Coachella was kind of the first time I really yeah. sat and was like, all right, I'm going to sing to these people. And uh, the response was crazy. Walk me through these boxes up here and, and all the toys, man. I yeah. see you got like two mics, one of them's yeah. for the effects. So this is a dry microphone. I mean, it's... M80. Facts. The best mic. It's really good, right? Dude, the best. This is my dry mic. Um, you know, when I am sitting and playing guitar, this is what I'll use. Also, you know, my front of house guy Andrew will emulate the vocal effects that I used on the album best he can, which has actually turned out really well. And then for, I, I really wanted to play around like modulation and, and re reverb and be able to control it myself. Cause I just think like, I don't know, me manipulating my shit live is what people want to see. I don't, maybe it's not. another instrument. Exactly. Yeah. And so I use this thing. This thing oh, is you a, got chaos pad. You got the OG pad. chaos pad. Yeah, I saw um, Johnny Greenwood and Tom York using this in like 92, I don't know, 90 something, 95. But Johnny Greenwood was sampling Tom York's voice while he sang and like twisting this around. And I just thought that was the dopest shit. And I was like, I got one and we explored it. There's like fucking 150 settings and we dialed in maybe, you know, six of them. And now I use them throughout the set That's strategically. Insane, to make it more of like a psychedelic experience, you know? For sure. Yeah. yeah, I think the album definitely lends itself to that as well. Yeah. I also saw like during Soundcheck, you're kind of adding things in real time. You were talking about harmonies and you're like, fuck it, we'll just, we'll record them tonight. We'll put them in for the show tomorrow. Yeah, You're yeah. kind of like live updating yeah, the set yeah, yeah. in well, real time. I mean, time. we're still figuring it out. It's hard, it's tough. Talk to me about your guitar collection. Dude, yeah, my guitars are crazy. You want to go see them? Yeah, please. It I hear are. you have an affinity for rare guitars. I do, yeah. 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 I'm out of my mind with that. Um, I got this one recently in Philly. This is Ada. This is my hey, guitar tech. She's great. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, this is like, dude, it was made in 2005 for an expo called NAM by this master builder named John Cruz. It's really crazy. The, what is this, like gold leaf? Gold leaf right. with translucent orange spray. It's insane. It's insane. It's just like built so well. The internals are crazy. It sounds like a classic strap. And this is what I've been using now, and it kind of looks like sunburn, right? Yeah, it does, man. Like it definitely feeds into the whole aesthetic yeah. of the album. Thank you. And then I got, what about that strap? This is what I was using before. What year is this, Sita? 66. 66? Damn. This thing's fucking nasty, dude. I don't know. This one sounds so good. I use this on a lot of the record. This was actually what I played on Sick. So it's like really beautiful. The checking is insane. People would advise not to take these things on tour because this thing's ask. like 20 grand. Correct. <laughs> you know, vintage guitars, yeah. right? I mean, the road can be a very unforgiving place, no, you know, for I know, instruments. I know, but luckily Ada kind of keeps them intact. And then we got this sucker right here recently too from the same dude, Dakota. Um, this thing's beautiful. It just sounds exactly like... Uh, It's the same thing, like it sounds exactly like the guitar I played on Frisky, so. We've just been trying to like, again, to emulate the fucking the sounds of the album. Yeah. To replicate them. I think a lot of artists are trying to get through the live show. Mm -hmm. When they think of touring, they think of it, like, of it as something that they have to get through and something that they have to do. It's not something that they want to expand on, you know, which is what we're trying to do. I like really want to move with intention. Everyone that I talk to, they all have a part to play you know, each person on the team and I make sure I know what their limits are and what they do, what they don't do and how I can use them and how they can use me yeah. and how we can work together to make it very nice. Like when something goes wrong with my in-ear monitor tech, they'll be freaking out. They'll be, they'll be angry at themselves and they'll come up to me and be like, oh, I'm sorry that this was messed up during the show. I love that. 
because we're all working towards the same thing to make these kids fucking lose their minds. You know what I mean? Well, you want people who care as much as you do. They do. Yeah. And, and it started with me. You have, it has to start with you because initially I would show up to rehearsals, you know, back in my first tour, I would come through and it would be like, all right, man, let's get through this fucking here, play the bass, I'll do this, you know, whatever. But then um, two tours in, it started to wear on me. I would be in my room and just like shut out everybody and just go to bed. And I didn't care as much as everyone else. And so this tour, starting with Coachella, I made sure that I was leading it. My friend Henry Quapis was the guy who really told me one day, I had to get sober to do it as well. I showed up and I was like, I think I was just hung over and messed up. And I was so tired. Everyone was playing like, Dom, you ready to sing? And I was like almost about to cry. I was like, I, can't, I don't want to sing. Like, fuck you guys. But then something hit me. I was like, we're all here because of me. Like, I'm also paying everyone to be here. So I should be as involved as I can and make sure it's really special. And then that translated to this like incredible live show that we did at Coachella. And then I'm kind of like riding off that high right now and that focus and that intention. And that's like how I'm moving for the rest of my life. Everything that I'm doing now, um, I cut out cigarettes, sex, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, stop using my phone at the fucking dinner table. Anything I can do, like, you know, I, I make sure when I, when I overwork, I'm, I recover properly. I have a trainer that comes on with me and like we make sure that every day I'm 100% ready to give these kids like, dude, every night it's someone's birthday in the crowd mm -hmm. or someone, someone flew from London to fucking Texas, you know? It's some 15 year old kid. If you're not doing it for you, you're fucked already. But also if you're not keeping that in mind and not doing it for them, you're, it's, it's not gonna work. Yeah, man, it sounds like you needed those, those dark times to be the catalyst to bring you to where you're at now. That's like my whole career, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you, man. I'm sober too. I've been sober for a year and Congrats. I feel Amazing. like life got so much better when I cut everything out. Doesn't you know, it's like simplification adds so much more. Yeah. And it's kind of ironic in a sense, cause you know, and I think from the outside perspective, people think touring is it's this huge party and you just want to go and just it's go crazy not. every night. It's not. There's no longevity. No, like, you yeah. die. That's how you die at 27 years old, yeah. 100%. And you know, going back to your, your kids' comment, I mean, we're looking out here, right, and there's all these seats. Does it ever hit you like tonight is going to be the most important night in somebody's life that's coming here to watch you? Yeah, no, it does, especially when I'm up there. The first song, if I'm a little tired and I'm looking at some kid's face and they're like, you know, about ready to cry, I'm like, okay, I'll drink coffee, I'll do whatever, I'll slap myself, I'll make sure we put on three layers of clothing so I'm sweating by the third song and I feel like I'm into it. I feel like if I'm not sweating, if I'm not bleeding, if I'm not getting cut up, if I'm not crying, you know, during my years making this music, I'm not really doing it. People talk about blood, sweat, and tears, but they will actually sit in LA and fucking scream at the mic, whatever, you move shit around on Pro Tools, but it's not, you're not like living. Like, I'm, we're living out here, we're doing something, you know what I mean? Like, we'll go on hikes, we'll take people to movies, whatever the fuck we have to do to like get out of our bodies and, and into this like mission, this like intention, yeah. you know? I think it's crazy too, because when you think about it, you strip everything back. We're like humans standing on the stage with wooden instruments, mm. vibrating, yeah. making noise. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something that's yeah. gonna get pushed to thousands of people yeah, and they're gonna beautiful. be in sync it's and do it with you. Talk to me about the stage setup, dude, because I feel like so many artists curate their stage production, right? And they wanna have it manicured. They don't want people to see what's really going on and they wanna hide the wires. Yeah. You've kind of taken this anti-curation approach, right? Where you've got trusses and scaffolding that are laying everywhere. You've got this just cloth all over the stage. Like, yeah. what was that decision like? Um, we learned that during, I did a college tour and I would come out to the song Come Here and we tried to make the lighting all crazy and blue and, and you know, have uh, whatever, weird stage design. But it wasn't like, I'm not like that cinematic, I'm not like acting up here, you know? It's just me singing. I have my guitars, I have my voice, that's all it is. I love it, man. And it's almost like, yeah, the anti-curation is a performative piece in itself. Walk me through the first Dominic Fike show. Uh, I played in Baby's All Right in New York. Yes. For like a bunch of the label heads and shit. It was like right when I got out of jail, dude. It was like, um, it was ass of shit, to be honest with you. I was so bad. What made it bad? I just didn't know what I was doing. I mean, maybe it was something endearing about it, but it wasn't good. And what's it like to be, you know, somewhere like this in an amphitheater looking at all these seats? Like, has it sunk in yet? Do you think about it at all? Um, yeah, every night. It's cool, man. I don't know. I just am trying to move forward with it. I, I want to do stadiums and arenas and shit. I want to just keep going and see what happens, you know? Hopefully, because um, I didn't even expect it to get to this point, you know? Each year, each time I drop something, I'm like, so I guess I'm a little bit surprised by the reaction, but maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I should 
it's also been like a process becoming healthy and getting off drugs and, and deciding this is what I want to do and I don't know each each year I gain a little bit more focus another layer of like sentience and awareness and kind of like I don't know I'm just pushing to uh, to challenge myself so yeah maybe this is meant to be it takes so much to, to pull something like this off at this scale I mean touring in itself is a beast like what made you say yes to doing an Apple Music Live and bringing in the cameras and having this whole thing filmed and I mean, I love Apple. I have an Apple on my face. I got one on my palm. You do, exactly. I'll do anything for you guys. Um, but also to challenge myself. You know, at first it sounded like a big task and it sounded a little nerve wracking, like having people come film the show. I'm like, oh God. But it's like, if this is something I want to do for the rest of my life, these are challenges that I should just accept and, and break through and move forward. Because that's like, that's the kind of artist I want to be. That's the kind of athlete I want to be. Someone that will just jump right into it. That's the kind of kid I was, you know? You'll bring me into any sport, we jump off cliffs, whatever, we, you know, like any, I don't know, I just love that mindset, like I'm Fearless. just trying to live, yeah, 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 just whatever it takes to live, like to feel, you know? I guess my last question to wrap everything up, you know, when you're standing backstage and you put your in-ears in and the set intro starts and maybe you have the metronome going off and there's, you know, 60 seconds before you got to run out there, walk me through that moment, what's, what's going on in your head? I just breathe. I do my best to just make sure my breathing is steady. Um, my good friend and collaborator, Claiborne, he'll do a prayer for us. I'm not exactly like a Christian, I guess you'd say. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really know what I am, but um, something like that really helps me. Just to be close to the people and put out into the universe, uh, like how grateful you are and what you kind of want in return. That helps me a lot. I guess a prayer is really nice. Does it change every night? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's kind of off the dome. See, that's one of those things that can be off the cuff. Yep. But as soon as we get out there, it's fucking everything's to a T. We're doing, we're hitting fucking these little targets. We're walking on tight ropes, hitting little targets with like deadly accuracy, you know? Precision. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to watch you hit those targets tonight, man. Thank you for Thank talking you. to us. Oh, man, my Congrats, pleasure, brother. brother. Thank yeah. you.